Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Dios los bendiga. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. We bless you. We worship you. We praise you. We give you thanksgiving. Yes, we do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was to do a quick commercial. I was listening to something yesterday. You you know, you've heard me say that the tongue, the tongue is the only part of the human body that is connected both to the spirit and to the flesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's yes. an instrument, the tongue is an instrument of the flesh, but it's an instrument of the spirit Amen. as well. And Amen. I was listening to Jerry Savell, and I'd never heard this story before. I was listening to him because he was talking about having a stroke, that he had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said the stroke was a very severe stroke. And it completely wiped his memory. He had zero memory. No memory. He had no ability to speak. <coughs> uh, no, uh, he couldn't remember any words. No, 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 no words of her. The only word in, in, in his natural language, he could uh, say yes was the only word he knew was yes. And that he was, um, he could pray in tongues. <coughs> and he didn't know what he was doing, but that, that he could, uh, he could pray in tongues. And uh, so he said that they uh, encouraged him to to pray in tongues. You know, it's a fascinating story because it was just like a vegetable, you know. Mm -hmm. And the only thing he could do was pray in tongues. But what happened was that as he began to pray in tongues, and he spent some time praying in tongues, it just all of a sudden everything just completely returned. Glory to God. And uh, and they had said he was able to show he was never going to recover. He'd never get as easy to be a vegetable the rest of his life. But he was he, he was praying in tongues, and I'll tell you the the, the tongue is a is a fabulous instrument because yes. it is connected to the flesh, but it is connected Amen. to the Thank to the spirit Jesus. as well. And the Bible, and this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible: "Death and life is death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof." And then we we picked up. Let me give you the scripture reference. This is something we really. We talked about a good bit at our campaign, meaning it's Isaiah 57, 18 through 19. And I'll, just, I'll read the whole passage. It says, I have seen his ways and I'll heal them. I will lead him also and restore comfort to him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Amen. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, said the Lord. I will heal him. I create the fruit of the lips. Amen. I create the fruit of it. I tell you, if there's no other scripture that you could get, that one, I create the fruit of it. You know, we, uh, if there was something that you were really believing in for, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a simple process to begin to, to engage God in that. And one of them is get you a picture of it, you know, because you were, we were given a, a, an imagination. And imagination is, 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 is the, the word means image, an imaginator. In other words, the producer of an image. That's Amen. What, what an imagination is, is the producer of an image. And Amen. so when we think, we don't think in words, we think in pictures, we think in, in things to see. And so one of the best ways to begin to release your faith and begin to put your faith out there was not just to get a picture of the thing that you're mm -hmm. looking for. For example, if you want, a, a, you know, a new car, you want a new home, or whatever it is that you, you want, get you a picture of it and get it out there. Get it on the, you know, get it on your refrigerator. Get it on the, on the mirror in your nightstand. You know, get it in the mirror in your bathroom. You know, so that you can see it. But the other thing is, you've got to get it into your mouth. You've yes. got to get it into your lips because he creates the fruit of the lips. He doesn't create the the fruit of the imagination, but the imagination puts puts fluff on it, puts 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 substance to the thing that you're speaking over, and he creates the fruit of the lips. And I remember when Pastor Gail and I we had been married but a very short period of time, and we went to a camp meeting, and we heard that John Amazini was there, and and he made this statement. He said, you know. He said, if something lives in your mouth, it 
won't be very long before it lives in your life. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I, I, I'd never heard that before. I had no idea what he was talking about. But he spoke with an authority, and there was a quickened, there was an, a quickened authority to what he was talking about that resonated in my spirit. And I knew that that was true. I didn't know why. I had no idea. Well, all these years later, I know exactly what he was saying, that, that you know, if it lives in your mouth, it won't be long before it lives in your life. And that's true of positive things, but it's equally true of negative things, probably more true of negative things, you know. So I just, you know, I encourage you that, that of the two scriptures, and, and we've talked about these scriptures again and again and again, uh, and uh, Proverbs 23, 7 and Proverbs 18, 21, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. There, there's such a, um, such critical things because they speak of the fundamental truth. You know, the Bible says that if you're going to get born again, the way that you get born again is you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord you should be saved. Mm -hmm. So, two things about that. First of all, you believe in your heart, you confess with mouth. There's two things going on there. It's not just one thing. You must believe it, but then you must speak it. The speaking reinforces what you believe. So you speak it, you believe it, and you speak it. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you, you shall be saved. So if there's one or the other of those that you didn't do, it won't do you any good to say it. <clears throat> and it won't do you any good to believe it if you keep it to yourself. So that's such a, 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 a key, key thing that you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's a critical, critical, critical thing to, to your, your, your speech and your, your declaration. Uh, Job 22, 28 says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it becomes established. And then the Holy Spirit begins to shed light on it. So you decree a thing. You, you decree what you want to have happen. You speak what you want to have happen. And certainly my experience over the years has been that my experience over the years has been that, uh, um, you know, when you begin to speak something or you choose something. And we had this, I, I just give you a practical example. When we were in, uh, uh, when we had first gone to Vero Beach, we had a, a real small house, a little house. It was way too small for us to, to actually occupy, you know, because we had had uh, five children and, you know, we're, we're in this little two-bedroom house. It's about a thousand square feet or so. And we, we, we knew that if we were going to be spending time there, we'd just that wasn't going to do. We we're going to have to have a bigger house. So we went out and started looking for houses. And uh, we, we found there were two or three houses that we, we, we saw. One of them in particular, um, you know, we, we saw this house. I kind of sort of like this house. So I, you know, well, that's what we do. We, you know, we, we begin to call it in. We begin to speak to it. We begin to speak to the house. We begin to call the house in. And, uh, and I had the Lord say on a couple of the different occasions, that's not your house, you know. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't call that in anymore. That's not your house, you know. And don't waste your time over them. Right. We, had, we, we had another, we finally settled on one we really liked. And uh, sort, of, sort of really liked. And, uh, and so we, we, we told the realtor, we, we said to the realtor, we said, listen, we're going to go back to, you know, we're going to pray about this overnight. Right. And uh, then, you know, assuming we... We, uh, you know, get to go ahead. We'll go. We're going to go ahead and we'll make an offer tomorrow. And so that night I had a dream, and the dream the Lord said, you know, there's witchcraft in that area, and uh, I don't want you in that area. Stay away from that area, and uh, uh, stay away from that house. Stay away from that area. So now you can just imagine the conversation with the realtor the next day. You know, <laughs> but uh, whatever. You know what? It, it wasn't. It wasn't. But I remember a number of years later, we looked at another house in the same area, and the same thing happened. The Lord spoke to me and said, no, I told you, there's witchcraft in that area. 
and I don't want you to have anything to do with uh, with it. Anyway, so, so the idea was here, here's what happens when you engage the spirit in your pursuit of things. In other words, not just something that you want or something you desire, but when you choose to engage God in that, what happens is all of a sudden now you've got the wisdom of God that enters into the process. And God's with you, and God's going to speak to you, and God's going to... But if you didn't engage God's help in the process, He's not going to speak to you about it. He's not going to, you know... Uh, uh, unless you previously established some sort of a chain of communication concerning those kinds of things, He's not going to do that. He's, not, he's just not going to respond that way. But when you choose as a seed to engage it, when we, you choose as a seed that your first fruit is to engage him in the process and engage the wisdom of God in the process, then what happens is all of a sudden, now you'll get his wisdom and begin to speak to you and begin to, to, to do that. So so speaking it, you know, it, it, it's an essential step to, 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 to recognize, to believe it, and to speak it. Those are, are essential steps that you do. But just as essential as engaging God in the process, you know, when you begin to call it in, when you begin to, begin to ask God to participate with you in that, all of a sudden now you've engaged the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, a, a critical, critical thing. Anyway, then let's go back to the, the, the tongue, once again, the tongue. So the tongue is connected to the spirit man, but the tongue is also connected to the flesh. And of course with the flesh, you know, uh, uh, and in the book of James, the word says, "No man can tame the tongue." Uh, it's absolutely true. It's it's an un, it says it's an unruly member, and no man can tame the tongue, but the Holy Spirit can tame your tongue. And um, I, you know, I know from personal experience that that is a fact. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> James three. They, yeah. It, what is that again, John? It's, it's James three. It says, so. <clears throat> it says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of four fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithsoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member. And boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue amongst our members, that it can defile the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and at it set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of servants and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. Therefore we bless, therefore with it, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made after the similitude of the same of God, of the similitude of God. Out of the mouth, same mouth proceeds blessing, and cursing my brothers, these things are not to be so. Hallelujah. So, no man can tame the tongue, but the Holy Spirit can tame the tongue. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, <coughs> if, <coughs> if, if you are working towards getting on board with him creating the fruit of the lips, you there's no way that you can tame your tongue to begin to do that, to begin to speak those things. You've got to have the Holy Ghost engaged in that process and, uh, and have him work with you in that process. So once again, that's all you do. You just engage him. You say, God, I need your help in this thing. I'm not, I'm not capable of doing it. You know, I, I need you to help me on this thing, but I want my tongue to be the tongue of the pen of the ready writer. Yes. So the words are, Amen. My tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Right. Amen. <clears throat> My words have power in the heavenly. Mm -hmm. I can decree a thing and it is established. Amen. 
the mouth of the just brings forth wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The words were good. Amen. The, word, the, the, the words are good. Anyway, what, uh, what Pastor Gail and I both, we, what we've been, been focused on is the scripture. Let me, let me uh, just read this. Jeremiah 32, 27. There's times for us where God will quicken scriptures for us. And therefore, perhaps a season that we're in or something that's coming, something that we're getting. And this is certainly one of those quick things. I, I had a dream back maybe, uh, I don't know, a few years 2019? ago. 2019? Could have been. Not 2019. Yeah, three or four years ago, I had a, had a dream one night. And uh, well, the Lord spoke to me about something. And there's something he was going to do for me. And I woke up from that dream and I thought, that is not possible. Mm -hmm. You know, that could not happen. And the Lord immediately quoted this verse to me. I mean, just quoted the verse to me. Right. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And then he added, this is from another scripture, is the arm of the Lord short? Is it shortened? You know, is it shorter than it was? Verse 17. Well, mm -hmm. of course it wasn't. What verse is that, sir? 17. Same passage? Uh-huh. We were just saying. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, and thine outstretched arm. Is there nothing too hard for thee? And then that was the he followed it up with that statement. Is there anything, is there anything too, too hard for me? Amen. And I immediately repented. And I said, God, God, I, I am so sorry. You know, I repent of that. And of course, of course you're able to do that. You know? <laughs> and I want you to do it. Of course you're able. I want you to, 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 to do that. You know? I mean, Amen. Goodness, how dumb can you get? You know? <laughs> oh, man, hallelujah. So God. that particular passage, Jeremiah 32, 27, though, is a, is, a, is, a, is a powerful word. And here's the, and, it, and it's such a, uh, I mean, God's speaking, Jeremiah's a prophet, and he's speaking to the prophet there. But the reality is that the people of God today, they do not believe that. Mm -mm. You know, they don't believe that nothing is too hard for God. They don't believe that God is capable. Of doing anything, they don't believe that he's he's able. Just like that situation with Jerry Savell, you know, where the doctors say, "Well, it's not possible." He had another interesting story about his 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 daughter. They cut her finger. She had an accident and cut her fingers off, and um, or cut off you know the, the ends of her fingers. And so they took her to this plastic surgeon, and the plastic surgeon said, "Well, you know, we can fix it." You know, we can graft it, but they're always going to be short. You know, they're never going to grow back. And uh, there's never going to be a nail there. You know, it's, never, it's always going to look funny, you know, and so forth. And he said, he told the doctor, he said, well, that's your wisdom. You know, that's what you think. But my God is able to restore those, Amen. those Amen. 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 And uh, so he said, you know, you do what you can do, and then I'm going to have my God yes. do what he can do. Amen. You know? So they, they grabbed it skin back over the fingers and it wasn't very much longer and lo and behold they grew back out and there were nails and everything just normal fingers they grew Amen. back out Glory and he said the, 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 the surgeon said you know I never saw that happen it's not possible that that happened uh, but there's it, nothing too difficult yeah there's nothing too difficult for God Amen. and our I problem is this. we're not trained to think that way right. we're not trained to think that that there's mm -hmm. nothing too hard for God. Amen. And in fact, we're, I mean, all of our, our uh, uh, you, you know, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, we, we grew up in less than uh, advantageous circumstances. You know, we were, we were, we were, it was, just, we were, we were just a, you know, the, the average household in the average place. And, 
and we didn't have any money. And the words that I consistently heard, what I kept hearing again and again and again, was, we can't afford that, you know, if we were going to do something. Like that. Oh, oh, we can't afford that, you know. And I hated those words. I just, I so loathed those words because, number one, it wasn't true. And I think I had a sense in my spirit, even from a young age, it wasn't true, you know. But... Um, we, we, we can't afford that meant that there was somebody who could. And, but I wasn't in that group. You know, there was a different group of people out there, and they could afford it. But I wasn't in that group. I was in the group over here that couldn't afford it, you know. And I hated those words. And I don't think my children ever heard me say those words when, when, when they were gone, because it wasn't so. You know, what was so is we get to sell for something. Right. You know, you, you right. see something you want, you know, like, okay, we're going to begin to sow for it. Yes. We're going to begin to plant some seed for it. Yes. We're going to begin to believe God for yes. it. And believe, believe God for it to, to come to pass. And that's the Amen. reality, and that's how we Amen. ought to think. But we don't think that way. We're not trained to think that way. We're trained to, you know, the doctors, well, we can cure this, we can't cure that. Or, you know, you, you need to get the COVID shot, you know, because uh, uh, we can't... Uh, uh, we can't guarantee that you're 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 going to be able to to uh, uh, not get COVID or survive COVID or what have you. I knew when we first heard the words COVID, I knew that I could survive COVID. That I wasn't going to get COVID. That I didn't have a problem. But I had nothing to fear. There was no. There's nothing to fear. And God actually spoke to me in a dream about the shot and. Uh, um, and without more into the detail, it wasn't a very pleasant dream about uh, <laughs> not getting death. a shot it's anyway. Uh-huh. And so we, I, I, I never did. I, I, I never got COVID. You know, I don't think I ever got COVID, but we don't stop long enough to, to, to investigate if we don't feel good today. <laughs> we don't stop long enough to find out why we don't feel good, you know. Come on, check it out. Come on. We just, we just keep going. We, go, we keep going. We're just going to keep on going. Yeah, that's right. So, over our finances, over my finances as a young man, and probably much like yours, much like everybody else, you know, we, we're trained to believe, well, there's just things we can't do, the things we can't afford, you know. Right. We, you know, some of the families can go on. Vacation, but we can't go on vacation, you know, right. because we can't really afford vacation, right. and, right. and right. so forth and so on. Some of you may have grown up in a little better circumstances than, mm-hmm. than uh, I did. Similarly, with the doctor, you know, the doctors would say, you know, you there's no cure for this, or there's no cure for that, or we can't heal this, or or we can't uh, uh, heal that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, there's 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 just nothing we can do. That's you know, they told my uh, my my daughter. Um, the doctors told her that, that she had diseases that were not healable, you know, that they could not be healed. And she said, oh, no, I don't receive that. Yes, you know? right. And, uh, and, and, and she was, you know, my son and, and, and her together, they said, I'm sorry, we don't believe that, you yes. know. And it was, they were healed. They were completely, completely and fully Amen. healed. Thank you, Jesus. And as if they were never, as if, as if they never existed, you know, but the doctors Jesus. said, that can never be healed. Right. You know, right. They, they were wrong. They, they were just wrong. Because they knew a God that nothing was too hard for that God. Right. And see, that's our, our problem. Is yes. We don't know that God yes. well enough, you know, mm-hmm. to to know that there is nothing that is too difficult right. for him. That there is absolutely nothing that is impossible mm-hmm. uh, for him. And so, since we don't know that God well enough, we don't believe that. And so our mind can be swayed by every wind of doctrine and circumstance and situation that, uh, that, that happens. But the reality is that God himself said, there is nothing Amen. too hard for me. Amen. And I, I, I will tell you, that my, 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 my recommendation to every Christian, and you could say, well, okay, this is a recommendation for every new Christian. No, 
because sometimes it's the old Christians that have it the worst. Of course, that's right. Is that you've got to begin to meditate God's ability to do anything, Amen. and it, because you've got to change it up here. Yes. If it doesn't change up here, it'll never change in your life, and and you've got to change it in here. If it's not doesn't live in your mouth, it won't live in your life. If it's not living in your mind, it won't live in your 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 uh, oh hell, let's live here. So okay. you know my that would be my my my, my script. My prescription for uh, every uh, Christian is you've got to begin to to recognize God's ability to do anything. Now, how would you do that? Or how, how, how could you how could you actually change a mind? And as I say, uh, and sometimes it's easier to change young people's minds mm. than it is older people. You know, the older people get the more set they are in their ways, right. the more things that you could believe. You know, my. My, my, my mother uh, died. She was 94, you know, and she lived a long life, and she was born again most of the days of her life. And she's a wonderful woman to love God and believe God. But there are a lot of things my mother believed that God couldn't do, you know, because as a young girl, that's what they taught me, you know, as a young child growing up. Right. 95 years ago, as a young child growing up, they said, God can't do this, God can't do that, and they accepted. They received it, right. and they believed it, and they never did anything about changing it. That shouldn't be you. What should be you is you should make a decision, I'm going to change that. Right. My God can do anything. Right. There's nothing that God cannot do. Right. There's nothing that God will not yes. do. Thank you. See, so those are two different know. things. Because a lot of people say, well, I know God can, you know, if he, if he would, but I don't know whether he will or not. Well, you just said he isn't going to do it. You know, that's what happens. That's what happens to God, because he's not going to respond to that. God responds to faith. There's no faith in that. There's no faith in uh, believing that, okay, well, God could do it if he would, but I don't know. You know, he just doesn't do that very often, and he probably won't do it for me. There's certainly no faith in that. And the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For we must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, most people don't really believe that God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. They don't know what's involved in diligently seeking him. One of the things involved in diligently seeking him is to find out what he said over a situation. If you were diligently seeking God, you'd want to know what did God say about that. You know, because see, the doctor just said that wasn't healable, that, that, that there's no cure for that. But God said, I'm the God of all flesh. Yes. There's nothing too hard for me. I am the Lord, your physician. I'm the Lord, your healer. I bore your sicknesses. I carried your diseases. And by my stripes, you were healed. Thank you, Jesus. So the, the process then is... is uh, is what did God say? And I would tell you that to to begin, if you're ever going to cross over to the supernatural, you're going to get over to the area where I'm going to live in the supernatural, you've got to change your mind. You've got to change your mindset. You've got to believe. You've got to get over to the fact that God is not, uh, uh, that, that, that God is not hampered. He's not restricted. He's not unable, that he's not short, he's not short kind. You know, I remember when uh, we had a, a, a situation happen, this is a number of years ago, we had a situation happen where, you know, we ended up in a very difficult economic circumstance due to um, the, just the, the, the way the world was. And we ended up crossways with this bank, and, 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 and the bank said, you know, we're going to take your property. And... Uh, you know, I don't think I really responded to them. Basically, they said, "You know, we're going to take your property." And the truth was, it was it was it was so it was an egregious thing because we were not delinquent. We had not performed any of the covenants that we had to perform. We made all of our bands, but they had the right to do it according to the law of men. But they didn't have the right to do it according to the law. Of Amen. God. So Amen. what happened was I began to pray. I just put it before God. And every single voice around me said, you know, 
just let it go. They're going to win. And and my response, and, and even my, my, my son, my oldest son, who's my lawyer, said, yeah, they're, he said, they're, they're going to win, you know? And I said, son, you know, I, here's the way I'm looking at this. That they may pry my fingers from around it, you know? And at the end of the day, you know, the judge may strip it away and he may pry my fingers off of it. But until that day, I will not let it go. And I will not, I am Amen. not going to give up. Amen. And so I prayed over that. I got a scripture. I began to pray over that, began to make declaration over yes. because I knew that God was able. Yes. See, I knew God was able. Amen. And that's such a key thing is you must come to the place that you know God is able. Amen. See, there's a higher order of activity Amen. than believing. And it's when you come to the place where you know. What you want to do is you want to get over to what you know. Yes. I don't believe that anymore. I know this. Because what you believe, you can change. You can believe this this minute and believe that the next minute. You, know, you can change what you, 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 you believe. We see that happen all the time. You know, We read these reports of uh, people, they believe this, and now they change their mind, and now they believe that. You know, And, and that sort of thing. And I, I, I got it. But what you know, that you know, that yes. you know, is not going to change. Mm -hmm. And I knew that God was able. Mm -hmm. And so in the face of every single voice to the contrary, I just prayed. And I found a verse. And I, and I got a verse and I began to quote a verse. And I prayed. I quoted that verse and prayed that verse and put that before the Lord for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Every single day. Yes. For two and a half years. And at the end of two and a half years, I had a dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what I had been saying was that, you know, Jesus, you cursed the fig tree. Mm -hmm. I cursed this thing here. You know, I cursed this. And I come in to shrivel up and die and go away. And mm -hmm. That's it. No man's ever going to eat food mm -hmm. from it again. Mm -hmm. And so after two and a half years, I had a dream. And basically what the Lord said was, don't say that anymore. Start saying this. And he gave me a new scripture, another psalm, through psalm, psalm 21, that they intended evil against you. They imagined mischievous devices, but they will be unable to perform them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I said, okay, God. So, so I changed my confession. And I began to pray that, and I began to pray that every single day for two years. Amen. It was two years of praying that. So at the end of four and a half years, the guy calls me up one day, and he said, they changed their mind. He said, they're not going to take your property. He said, I don't know why they changed their mind. They just changed their mind. And, uh, Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Thank I you. knew four and a half years before they were going to change their mind. And that was certainly my mind. Uh, and, and I had other situations where the Lord said, you know, over other situations where the Lord said, no, just let that go because that's not what I have for you going forward. That's, that's, not, that's not your future. Right. You know, I've got a future for you, and that's not it. Yes. I've got a future for you. This is it. Right. It's not it. Amen. And when you listen to God, Amen. then you can find out what does he have for you in the future and what is it. Because if there's something that you, you, you're you holding on to, right. that God doesn't have in your future, you don't want to hold on to that anymore. Right. Right. You right. want to let that go. Right. On the right. other hand, if there's something that is in your future that God has for you in your future, you want to be pursuing that. You want to be Amen. saying it. You want Amen. to be, be, de be declaring it. So the truth is, if you're ever going to cross over to the realm of the supernatural, what you've got to do, the place you've got to begin is in your mind. Mm -hmm. And you've got to begin to recognize that there is nothing too hard for God. Yes. There is nothing too hard for God. Now here's how I would do that if it was, if it was me and I was in that situation. Mm -hmm. I began to get the scriptures concerning that matter and what I would do because, and the reason is, I mean, I could say it. I could, I, I could just be saying it. You could just be saying it. But the word of God contains faith. Mm -hmm. That is a different yes. matter because yes. without faith, it's yes. impossible to please God. The word of God and itself. your words, if they're not God's words, they don't contain faith. Uh -huh. What you need is you need faith. So when you begin to speak God's word, what happens is your faith begins to rise. And the more of God's word you speak, 
the more your faith yes. begins to rise to that. So where you you don't want to just end up where you're sort of persuaded that you know God is able. You want to end up in a place where your faith is around that, that God is able Amen. to do and there's Amen. nothing that I can't do. And my faith is up there with that for Amen. that to begin to hold. So anyway, I got a list of I got a list of different scriptures here of situations that are and you might make a, 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 a note. Certainly, uh, number one would be the first first appearance of this is in the book of Genesis. Now, in in there's a there's a, a biblical principle called the law of first mention, and uh, what the law of first mention means is when it's first mentioned in the Bible, how it's used in that passage, and the meaning of that, and the application of that. It's going to be that way throughout the Bible unless the Bible indicates that it's different. Mm -hmm. So Genesis 18, 14 is the law of first mention concerning this matter. Moreover, Genesis is also the book of beginnings. Mm -hmm. And every significant biblical principle is contained in the book of Genesis because it is the book of beginnings. And as Genesis 18, 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? And this is God speaking to Abraham. He said, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return about this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. In other words, Amen. see, she's too old to have a child, and he's too old to father a child. She's too old to father a child. But God said, hey, she's going to have a child, Amen. and, and that, this time next year, she's going to have a child. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Sarah laughed. <laughs> Sarah laughed at it. And, uh, and Abraham was skeptical. <laughs> Abraham was willing to do his part. If Abraham did not go into Sarah's tent, then there would have been no child. So Abraham had a part he had to play. You know, he had to disregard his age. <laughs> he, he had to disregard his age. He had to disregard her age. Right. So they had a part that they had to play. But what they had to do is they had to believe God. Amen. And God said, God said to Abraham, nothing is too hard for me. You see that this thing is not going to come to pass. Amen. And then, of course, Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? But let me just give you just a few more, more scriptures. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, what happens is Jesus responds. Jesus speaks it now. Jesus responds to me. He says, nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible with God. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and he said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, uh, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it, and it will be yours. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's see what else we got. Mark 10, 27. Jesus looked at them and he said, With, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things Amen. through him who strengthens me. Amen. I can do all things. Wasn't that in the, 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 the donut man? Didn't the donut man have one of those songs? I can do yourself. all things. All That's things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Amen. <laughs> we watch a lot of donut man videos. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all probably don't know who he was. Mm -hmm. what, what was his name? What was that? The Donut Repair Club. The Donut Repair Club, yeah, it was because there was a hole in their heart, you know, and mm -hmm. so the, and the, the Donut Repair Club, the, 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 there was a hole in the center, and uh, the, there was a hole in the center of the heart, and so the idea of the Donut Repair Club repaired the hole in the center of the heart, because the yeah. hole in the center of the heart was, yes. was in the, needed repair, so it was yeah. the Donut Repair Club, mm -hmm. and only God could repair the hole that was in the, yes. in the heart. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17. See, what, what I would do is I would memorize. You don't have to know every one of these scriptures. Just, just 
take two or three. Get two or three of them and memorize them. Because scriptural memory or the memorization of scripture, what happens is, and again, you don't have to know the whole Bible, just get you three or four of them. Mm -hmm. But when you put them in, it becomes a seed. What you're saying to God is, this is important enough for me to remember it. Mm -hmm. This is important enough for me to get it in my heart so that it's there so I don't have to go look it up when I need it. It's there and I can speak it. And I'm not Googling it. Uh, yeah, I don't have to well, Google, I'm Google it. it. It's in my heart. I can go look it up. This one was was one that I got a hold of years ago. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn. This is your heritage as a servant of the Lord. And it is righteousness comes from you, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Oh, let's see. Another one is uh, to the, the ability to cast your care. This is one of the weapons of your warfare. Mm -hmm. 1 Peter uh, 5, 7 says, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. That's a, a, a weapon of your warfare, the ability to be able to cast your care. The ability to be able to take those things that you worry about and cast them over on him. Mm -hmm. And pick them up again later if you need them. You know, if you have to pick them up. But let him carry the burden of those things. Because your mind gets all caught up in burdens and things like that. And you're just not going to be able to focus on the, the things that you need to be able to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to focus on. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you. In other words, there's nothing impossible for him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Once again, just, just pick a few scriptures and begin to uh, uh, speak them. This is one of my favorites too, Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20 and 21. Now unto him is able to do far more abundantly than all that you ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Second Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7, 25. He lives to make intercession. Amen. He lives to make intercession Amen. for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank Again, you, Lord. Philippians 4, uh, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great hidden things that you have not known. That's a good one to remember because there's a lot, a lot of things that happen in life that you don't know the answer to. But if you call on him, he can tell you the things you don't know. If you call on him, he can tell you the things that you don't know. Amen. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. That's another one that I memorized years ago. Because the word that he what he says is that if, if the book of the law does not part from your mouth and you have it in your heart, yes. what happens is that he will give you good success. The word success appears one time in the Bible, and it's right there. And that's, mm -hmm. the, only, that's the only place that the word success actually appears. And I was interested in being successful. <laughs> <laughs> so I needed, I needed to know that. Yeah. I needed to know that scripture. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Go back on 115. Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded for I'm doing a work in your day that you would not believe it if I told you. Hallelujah. Romans 421. This is about Abraham. It says he was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he promised. Hallelujah. Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Oh, Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply every need according to 
His wisdom is in the Lord. My God shall supply all needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. First John 5, 4, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has given us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control or sound. Or this 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 one let me make let me let me make note of this one in particular. It's Hebrews eleven eleven. It says by he's trying it's, the, it's called the roll call of faith in that particular passage. It's called the roll call of faith. And here's what it says: it says, By faith Sarah received power to conceive. Now it's talking about Abraham. And he's talking about Abraham and Sarah there, and Abraham's 99 years old, and Sarah's 90, and she has a baby at 90, 90 years old. She has to have the faith to conceive. But you have to have faith to conceive ideas. Amen. Business yes, situations, right. ministry situations, right. ministry circumstances. Yes, right. You can have the faith to conceive. The faith to conceive. God, I want the faith to conceive what I'm supposed yes. to be doing. Where Amen. am I supposed to be going? What am I supposed Amen. to be doing? I need the faith to conceive a plan. I need the faith to conceive a business. Amen. I need the faith to conceive ideas. Sarah was given faith to conceive. Power to conceive. Hallelujah. Numbers 11, 23, once again. Is the Lord's hand short? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. Is the words is the is the hand of the Lord too short? Hebrews four sixteen. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and grace, meaning empowerment, in the time of need. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in the time of need. Luke 17, 1 through 37, it's actually around 5 through about 8 or so. Uh, the apostle said, the Lord increase our faith. Amen. And he said, I can't do that. What he said is, the way your faith increases is you plant it like a seed. It's done by seed time and heart. Every time Amen. you speak one of these things, yes. you're planting come on, come on, come on. You're planting faith. Every time you speak something that has faith in it, you plant your faith. Yes, and it right. will grow up. It will harvest. It will grow up and become Thank greater Lord. because that's the way a seed operates according to Mark 4. is the seed that gets planted, it grows up Amen. and it becomes greater. When you plant the seed of faith, and every one of these scriptures has the seed of faith in it, when you plant the seed of faith, the seed is going to grow up. Amen. It's going to become greater. And you're going to get more faith. That's the way that it works. Romans 1.17 The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. For it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. We are supposed to live by faith. And I'll give you a couple other scriptures here. We talked about these the other night. In the context of renewing your mind. See, what we're supposed to renew our mind to is God's ability to do anything for us. Right. It's God's ability Amen. to conquer all of our enemies. God's Amen. ability to subdue every Amen. enemy, natural and spiritual. God's ability to make me an Come overcomer. On. I mean, those are all, all critical, critical things. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 4.22, James 1.8, Philippians 2, 3-11. Let's, let's look at Romans 12, 1-3. And I appreciate that 
basically I'm just going through scriptures here. But here's the thing. They contain faith. Yes. And you need faith. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. So yes. you need faith. Yes. When you speak the scriptures, when you sow the scripture, when you recite the scriptures, you're planting your faith so that your faith grows up. Yes. And you need, you know, big faith accomplishes big things. Little faith accomplishes little things. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed Amen. by the renewing of Amen. your mind. That's how you become transformed. That's how you become another person. That's how you yes, become you. victorious and successful Amen. in the areas where perhaps you weren't before. You mm -hmm. renew your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man is among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think, but to think soberly accordingly as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll just look at a couple more here. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. To be carnally minded is death, spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. Mm -hmm. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed wow. can it. Colossians 3.10 Put on the new man renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. In other words, renew your mind. Put on the new man. Put on the new man. Put on the man, on the man who is a spiritual man. Yes. Who is after spiritual things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, what do we know then? What you think, how you think, yes. is critical. And you change what you think with what you say. To be able to speak becomes a seed to change in your mind. The things that you speak. When you speak the Word of God, the Word yes. of God contains faith. Mm -hmm. So you speak faith, you're renewing your mind, but you're building your faith, yes. both of those Thank things. You, so to speak the word, to speak what God said. Once again, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a lot of them. Just get you a couple of them. You know, mm -hmm. I have three or four scriptures mm -hmm. memorized that you know when I when I go out and pray, I'll recite those memoriz memorized scriptures because I want the faith that Thank is contained Jesus. in them to rise up. Because if I'm going to be praying, I want to have my Thank faith activated. Jesus. And it's easily activated by just getting a few scriptures up there. Once again, they don't have to be, they don't have to be, a, hallelujah, they don't have to be alone. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues were singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, wherever we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, is the strength in the south. They that sow in tears will reap in joy. And they that go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, will doubtless return again. You engage your faith with just a few scriptures and change your mind and change and change your life, and change your circumstances and situations. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, like I say, I know that, that, that you know, there was a lot of scriptures there that we were reading, but hey, at the end of the day, they contain faith. And that's what people lack, is people need faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and don't, don't be concerned that you're not grasping all of it. Let this word, it's like you take a pill, and you put it in, and it does its work. This word is a more sure word. And when you put it in, in other words, it's going to work in you. 
And um, what I will do on if it's if there's a subject that's before me, something that the Lord wants me to study, I will go to the Strong's. I still use my Strong's. I don't just print it out on the computer. I have a big Strong's concordance, exhaustive mm -hmm. concordance, and I'll go and look and look up the word. I want to make sure that I understand what it was in the Hebrew and the Greek. This is me. Kevin doesn't do the same thing I do. But this is how I work. And, and then I will maybe, I'll go through the study of that subject and I will write down and, and go through and read those scriptures, write them down and read them, and then I will read through them. Just like the book of Ephesians, when I was getting a hold of Ephesians, I would reread Ephesians, like it's only five, six chapters. I would read it again, and I would reread it, and I would reread it, and let the Holy Spirit then start to minister to me from that word. Same way for you, when you get those scriptures, Yes, you want to memorize it, but you really want the Holy Spirit to speak to you concerning, if it's a subject, what he's speaking to you concerning that subject. Like Pastor Kevin and I, a couple weeks ago, I shared that I've been going through this, uh, the scriptures on the glory, what the glory of the Lord is this year. It's a personal thing that I've been going through. And so I have been meditating on these scriptures in my personal time and going through my, many scriptures on the subject of the glory. And so we were talking about the glory and the manifest presence of God and the cabal. And, uh, and Pastor, uh, so we went to sleep. I said, Lord, speak to me. Uh, what do you want? From, I'm, I'm meditating your scriptures, your word, but what are you speaking to me? Because I want to know what, what are you speaking to and that night, the Lord gave Pastor Kevin a dream about the glory, about the wave of glory. I shared it at the come away. And, um, and so, um, so God gave Pastor Kevin a dream that was responding to what I was praying about. Amen. And so sometimes that will happen if you have you know, somebody close, like Pastor Kevin and I are always pulling on each other and talking to each other about the word. Um, but I know that he will speak to you because he wants you to be able to take that word and be able to direct it into a situation. And so I, that's the way that I do. I, will, I have lots of scriptures that I've committed to memory. I can't tell you the, men, the number. But, but then when I'm listening, and, and this is another why we put the word in, is for me, when I'm listening, I hear people talk a lot. They talk about this and this and that. And as they're talking to me, I'm, oh, here we are. I'm thinking the thing's still there. Here, here. Uh, as, 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 um, as the people are talking to me um, about a particular subject, I want to, I'm like kind of inwardly praying, inwardly, you know, um, I want the word that is in here to rise up and, and direct what is to my response, not out of here, because that's the, where the natural man, the natural man, the carnal man, or the, the soulish realm is up here. But I'm looking for the word from God, and that's what part of the reason that you want to put it in, because that's the truth over the situation, that it will start to rise up, and it will speak what's truth. Because people talk about all kinds of stuff. You know, I mean, I was talking to somebody a few months ago, and as, as you, in the whole time, the Lord said, there's not a spiritual part of any of this. Everything she's dealing with in this situation is natural. So there's not any, <laughs> there's just nothing I was looking to grab to, to agree with, but there was nothing. It was all done in the natural. And so, like, like Pastor Kevin read, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. And so we bring the tithes this morning because we know that this is not just a seed of money, but this is when we bring the tithes, it is a spiritual seed and it is going into the realm of eternity. And it is by faith that we we offer our tithes and offerings to you, Lord. It is you that receives our offerings. It's not man, but Father, we, we 
thank you, God, that you have rebuked the devourer for our sake. So many times we hear stories about situations, great men and women of God that have had tragedies and have had several situations that God's performed miracles. And, and, and Lord, we just thank you for the miracles and the, and the protection that you have kept our children and kept us countless, countless times, even yesterday, kept, kept us from tragedy, kept us from attack through angels ministering on our behalf. And so, Father, we thank you for the miracles that you've done for us. We thank you that we rejoice to bring the tithes to the storehouse. And we have proven you and you have open to us the windows of heaven and poured us out blessing that we don't we will not have room enough to receive so we with joy bring the tithes and offerings into your house lord father you always move through the local church father there's ministries that we sow to but father we thank you that you minister and you have a church a local church that you have established in this area and we thank you for it father we give you all the glory we thank you that you've established this work by the spirit it was not our pattern it was your pattern and father we have held to the pattern in which you gave us on the mount not man's plan not man's direction but what you gave us and so father we thank you we thank you that it will produce after its kind, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the uh, offerings. We thank you. We receive all that you've done for us uh, in, in this hour and in the past and what you're doing for us in the future, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We will see you uh, tomorrow morning as the prayer, uh, Love, Pray, Build, starts at 5 in the morning. We'll be on, and then we'll be back with you to recap tomorrow morning. God bless you.